Amen. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles. Anywhere's fine. It's all anointed. To Hebrews chapter 11 again. Hebrews chapter 11. And I want to give you some practical tools today that will help you in walking a victorious walk and help you live a life full of hope. Come on, how many of you know we live in a day right now where hope is being robbed from us? Never before in history, have, have the, uh, in American history, have the surveys come out that since they've been doing the statistics that more people believe that their children are going to have a lower standard of living than they are. People don't believe that the economy is going to get better. People are looking at all these different things. They're losing hope. The danger with that is, is hope is that driving force that will give you the willingness and ability to risk, to step out and to try things. Because if you have no hope, you're not going to risk. Yeah, exactly. Come on, amen. amen. Come on, somebody, somebody say hope. hope. See, see, I love the power of hope. Yeah, I do. No, 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 I'm sorry. I, I didn't tell you this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to tell you to say that. But I love the power of hope. Because you can have the geekiest dude, which was me as a high schooler, you can have the geekiest dude with the big old pimples and glasses with the tape on it, but if he's got a hope that the head cheerleader is going to go out with him, he's willing to risk to try. And it isn't amazing, it sometimes works. We all looking at me strange. Why, he's got hope, someone say hope. He's got hope. He looks at it and says, this, I, I have a, a desire with an expectation for fulfillment. Because see, hope will give you confidence and boldness. I'm going to say that again. Hope, everybody say hope, hope. will give me confidence and boldness. Sunday. Just like when we started this church, I had a hope. I didn't have a hope to have 50 people. I had a hope of a church that would be exploding that would still not back away from signs and wonders and miracles and laying on of hands. And all. Now, people, people ought to try to rob me of, of hope because they try to tell me their opinions. But I, they had an opinion and I had a vision. Someone say hope. Okay, here we go. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Everybody say the substance. Things are the substance of things hoped for. We said this over the last number of weeks, but I'm going to hit it again until it breaks loose. Without hope, your faith has nothing to attach itself to. And that's why the enemy will do everything he can to rob you of your hope. Man, you can, you can pray for years for somebody that's totally backslidden and bound as long as you have a hope. You can go through all kinds of circumstances as long as you have a hope. A hope, you know, we, always, we use the phrase uh, light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. That's a hope. Because if you don't think the sun's going to come out tomorrow, you're going to stay in your cave. And it's interesting that when you, get, when you lose your hope, when you get robbed of hope, all the negatives become bigger. When you start losing your hope in your marriage, all of a sudden that little stuff becomes big irritation. Am I talking to anybody here? And then it gets to a point where people say, and I, we deal with marriage counseling for over the years, and people sit there and say, well, it's hopeless. They're on the way to divorce right there because they've given up hope that God can heal my marriage. But I'm telling you, we serve a God of restoration. Yeah. And then they say to, me, say to me, but you haven't met my husband. And I say, you haven't met my Jesus. Come on. And, <laughs> oh, Lord. Come on, somebody say Hope. That's what, when people say a dead-end job, what are you talking about a dead-end job for? You're blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You got hope. Oh, but there's nowhere in advancement. Sure there is. Own the place. Huh? I don't know if I can believe God for that. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. To begin to believe God for the supernatural. Begin to believe God to do above and beyond whatever you dare ask or think. Begin to believe God for the crazy. I think, I think God is just looking for some people that are going to begin to believe for the crazy just so he can show that he is God. 
That's why when I drive down the street, when they used to have the billboards up for Budweiser, I don't know, I think they're, for, I don't even know if they're allowed anymore. I don't see them around here. But see a Logan something for Budweiser, I used to drive down the street and look at Budweiser and say, Budweiser, one day you're going to give me $3 million. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Don't look at me like that. Y'all look at me like that, you know. Huh? Why not? Anybody here can use three million? Yeah. I was waiting for someone to jump and say, 20. Okay. All right. So hope. In order to build hope in our lives, I want to give you a few just simple practical things and, 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 and for us to do to build that hope because we have to have hope in order for our faith to attach itself to something. So Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 8. Verse 8 and 9. Joshua 1, verse 8 and 9. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This book of the law, the word right here, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will, you will, you will have good success. I want to back up to a few things here. Look at that. He said that you may do observe to do all that is written in it. Now, we always look at that from the negative standpoint. That, well, that I may make sure I don't break the laws of God. And it does apply to that. But I want you to look at the positive. Not only that I may be careful to not break the laws of God, but that I may also do all the things that are positive. That I may do the affirmative things, not the, just the negative thing. That I don't just avoid the negative, but I do the affirmative. So meditate on the word day and night that I may not just avoid the negative, but that I may act in the positive things that, uh, that God has commanded me to do so that when I do that, my life will be prosperous. You know, there's nothing. I've been in seasons of prosperity, and I've been in seasons of lack. And, 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 and I like prosperity better. Come on, I'm in dry seasons, and thank God he takes you through those things. And I've been in seasons of abundance, and, and it's just flowing like a river. I like the river better. I thank God for the, he takes you through dry seasons, but don't hang out there. Come on, Psalm 23 said, yea, though I go through the valley. Not yea, though I camp out in the valley. Some people get in the valley and it's like, oh, here I am. Oh, woe is me. They kind of like my mother. I love my mother. She's the sweetest, nicest, kindest, most generous person. She is so sweet, but she believes Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. And, and she always, things always go wrong for her. Gee, I wonder why. Because she takes it and she confesses it. First thing you need to do, everybody say, speak God's word and his promises. Speak God's word and his promises. Speak it out. The word meditate there literally means to mutter under your breath. Speak it out. Talk God's word. Talk up the word. Talk up the promises. Don't talk up the circumstances. Because when the circumstances are going to come, don't get all discouraged if circumstances come. It's called life. The Bible says it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. Huh? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but. The Lord, someone say the Lord. <laughs> the Lord shall deliver them from them. Oh, so don't get this. Come on, come on. Uh, you, you, don't get discouraged on the. On, uh, don't get discouraged on the circumstances. Don't get discouraged on the negative things. Sit there and say, "Hey, look out! God's about to show up and show off." I believe we're in the, in the habit of seeing a miracle. We've talked many times, and a, a friend of ours, Pastor Steve Hill, mighty man of God, been battling stage four cancer for several years now. In May, they, they literally said he was within an hour of death three times. They said he was right there. Well, I just got a report back last night that he's over in Germany and they're doing some detox. They said his, his uh, recovery and improvement is astounding. 
stay. They stay within a matter of no time at all. They expect them to be back to 90% already. 90% strength. My God. Huh? Not only did the doctors and the circumstances continue to say no hope, no hope, but God said there is a hope. And I'm telling you, there's people around him, and I know Steve Hill. He never gave up. We never will give up. Glory be to God. Huh? And we need that mighty man of God back out there. Yes. Woo! Romans chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Speaking about Abraham, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed. The circumstances were contrary to hope, but in hope he believed. Yeah. Why? Because he knew he served a God that called the things that are not as though they were. Now, I want to talk for a moment about confession. Because we heard a lot of stuff about positive confession, amen? And, and I, I, I honestly, I'm, you know, I, I, I wrestle with some stuff at times. I, I saw a lot, I heard a lot of teaching in my early Christian walk about positive confession, but the prophetic nature of me is a guy of just absolute honesty. And I had a problem when a friend of mine, a wonderful pastor, friend of mine, great guy, we were growing up in ministry together, and he was really from the positive confession crowd. And I remember one time he came in, and he was sicker than a dog. I mean, I mean, I mean, hawking and hacking and coughing and just, and then he'd sit there and say, I'm not sick. I was like, oh, dude, you're sick. Guy, okay. you're sick. And I, I, and he would say, no, that's a negative confession. I'm saying, you're sick. And I had a real issue with that because I thought he was lying. Am I talking to anybody here? Yeah. I mean, I kind of looked at his lying. You're sick, dude. You know, I believe for the healing, but you're sick. But he's like, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. And so I, one day I was in prayer complaining to God. None of you have ever done that. You ever gone to prayer to intercede and you end up turning to complaining? Let me explain that. I was telling God all the ways my friend was wrong. And I said, and I said, Lord, I don't like all this positive confession stuff. And I just think they're lying. And the Lord said, be quiet. And he said, son, you don't understand confession either. Hey, you may be right that they don't have it all right, but you don't know it either. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. I didn't like that because I couldn't complain anymore. <laughs> Some of y'all can't handle the honesty of this church. You're just like, I was just like, I was like, but, but, but I still don't like what he does. But I had to realize I didn't understand it either because there is a power of confession. And so I started saying, Lord, teach me. And it wasn't sitting there saying, I'm not sick anymore, but it was deciding what I'm going to speak. And that is, he is wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is laid upon him. And by his stripes, I am. I am healed. Sickness may be attacking my body, but I am healed. Huh? Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. See, I see a realm of positive confession, even with Shadrach, Meshach, and off to bed you go. I see a good report. They said, our God, oh king, is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we ain't bowing our knee. Because if God has a bigger plan, that's not a negative confession. That's a confession of that we trust in God no matter what. Glory to God. But there's power. Someone say there's power. There's power in your words. I remember back in the early days, uh, 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 God's had to help me a lot with this. Because I remember, I remember hearing when the Browns Revival broke out, and I heard good things about the Browns Revival, and then I heard some negative stuff. And it's amazing how many negative, how the negative things work on us. 
And I heard a few little negative things. And so I remember preaching at some places and I would make little comments and say, I'd say, oh, you know, I'm sure you all heard about the revival in Brownsville. Thank God for what he's doing. But whenever you hear a but, get ready for some stinking thinking. And the Lord showed me. And then I went to Brownsville on the four-year anniversary, absolutely got blasted by the Holy Ghost, came back two weeks later, got prayed for 11 times. Because I'm a sponge, man. I don't, I, I, don't understand going, I don't understand going to a meeting, going to church, and just kind of going, being satisfied with just a little touch, man. I want to just, just draw it all out. More. More. Grab the preacher's hand. Put it on my head. More. So I got, so then I was like, you know, now I was raving about what God was doing. And the Lord showed me several years, a couple years later, he showed me that the words that I spoke back then were still like a, a giant canker worm eating through the body of Christ because somebody else heard it that picked it up, then they transferred to somebody else, then they transferred to somebody else, and they transferred to somebody else. Oh, Lord, let it not be so. Let my words be filled with grace and let my words be filled with hope. Huh? Someone say hope. Okay, uh, uh, da, 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 da. uh, in hope, someone say contrary to hope, in hope believed, contrary to hope, in hope he believed. So everybody say, confess the word. Confess the word. Say it again, say, speak the word. Open your mouth and speak the word out. Speak the promises of God out. Confess the promises of God out. That unexpected bill comes in. Don't sit there and say, oh, I don't know how we're going to pay. Sit there and say, oh, get ready. My God shall supply all my needs. Huh? Reminds me of a pastor friend of mine from New Zealand. I went down and I preached a message on, on giving. And I'm telling you, those people down there are stiff when it comes to giving. They, they, they were, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, stiff. They didn't like it, especially an American preacher about giving. So I stood up and uh, I was a little, <laughs> you all going to think this is crazy. I, I got up and I started preaching on giving. And, 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 uh, and, and I sit there and I started off, I said, I'm so sick and tired of American preachers preaching about giving. Why can't they just leave it alone? Why can't they just let people trust God and do what they want to do? And they're all kind of looking at me. And I said, I said, so I'm not going to talk about money at all. So I get in and I open the Bible, start reading to Matthew, and I get to Matthew, and all of a sudden, bam, there's something about money. And I said, oh. I said, I'm sorry, folks. I didn't want to talk about money. I'm so sorry. And I took the page and I ripped it out of the Bible and I threw it away. And then I read the next page and the first part of the next page, first thing, start talking about money. I said, oh, man, sorry. I ripped that page out. Got to the top of the next page. Next page, start talking about money. I said, guys, oh, I'm sorry. Well, it is Matthew. He was a tax collector. So then I went to Mark, same thing, started reading Mark, bam, money, money, money. Ripped the whole book of Mark out. Then I said, well, let's go to Luke. He wouldn't talk about money. He's a doctor. And then I said to him, and I said, you know, the scholars say that one-fourth of the entire Bible deals with money issues. So I took a quarter of the Bible, I ripped it out, I threw the pages in the air. Then I just hung that limp Bible like this. I said, anybody want to hear the full gospel? I don't know if that's boldness or insanity. <laughs> we took an offering, the largest offering that, that conference they'd ever given. They, I mean, they wouldn't give. It was a, a young people's conference. The largest con offering they'd ever given was $1,000. God had already spoken to me beforehand that in that service they were going to give $16,250. They gave $16,252.50. Wow. I just wanted to figure out who disobeyed God and gave $2.50 <laughs> that they weren't supposed to. So anyways, this pastor, he sowed a seed in there, and he gave a, 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 a big seed, and he was believing God. But that wiped out his bank account. He didn't have money because Christmas was coming up a few weeks later. He didn't have money for Christmas, but he was taking a hold of the promises of God. He went down to the bank that morning and found that, you know, there was no money in there. And so uh, he sat there, and he got home, and he said, well, Lord, your word says and your promises say 
that give it, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So he set his wallet up on, on the table. And he set it up like this, and he started speaking the promises of God to his wallet. Come on, are you ready to get into a little bit of a crazy level of faith? I know it makes some of y'all comfortable. I'm not comfortable. Well, do it in private then. Nobody has to see. You know, it's kind of like learning to dance before God. Jack Hayford, God had taught, taught him the importance of dancing before God. Jack Hayford's a very, you know, in control man. And, and the Lord told, taught him to dance before in his prayer closet because he definitely wasn't going to do it in public. And then, then he got free. So he went up there and he started speaking to it. In the name of Jesus, I command you, be filled. And he laid hands on it. He got slain in the spirit. <laughs> and as soon as he did that little ridiculous act, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, go check your bank account again. So uh, he went down, and that's before you could do it online. He went down back to the bank, put it in. Be when he went in the morning, there was only $1 in there. When he went back, $1,000 had showed up out of nowhere. To this day, he doesn't know where it came from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'll see half the church go out down to the ATM after service. In the name of Jesus, be filled. <laughs> Come on, why not? Huh, why not? Why can't God fill your gas tank up? Why can't he fill your bank account up? Why can't he cause a miracle debt cancellation? Huh? When they all of a sudden say, hey, you don't know that. No, I do. No, you don't. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Instead of looking at that pile of bills and saying, oh, I don't know how we're going to get out of it. Say, oh, glory be to God. My God shall supply all my needs. Woo. Huh? Bye-bye, Bill. Bye-bye, heaviness. Sorry, all right, all right, sorry, sorry. Huh? Okay. Come on. Come on. All right. Second, first, con ever say confess the word. Yes. Second, think on good things. Yeah. Yes. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Let's flip over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think the best. Someone say, think the best. You know, Bob even talks about love. It always thinks the best. Think the best. Come on, somebody. We live in a day and age you can hardly turn on the news because they want you to always think the worst. I choose, I'm going to choose to think the best. I'm going to pray for truth to come out, but I want to think the best. Come on. Can, can we deal, I mean, with stuff going out and all these accusations against Herman Cain, you know what? I just, I choose to think the best. I'm, if it's true, Lord, let it come out and let the man repent. And if it's not true, God, let it come out. But I'm going to think the best. I don't want to see anybody destroyed. Huh? You got to be careful of all the stuff we listen to. Well, uh, the talk radio. You know, I mean, I mean, if you listen to talk radio, Barack Obama's got a tail and corns come out of his head. Come on. I'm going to listen. I, whether you agree with the policies or not, I'm going to choose to think the best. Am I talking to anybody here? Come on. But whatever's true, I'm going to think on those things which are true. What's true? What is true? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's what's true. Huh? What is true? We're going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm going to be head, not the tail, above and not beneath my enemy. Yeah, he's going to come at me one way, but he's going to be split. 
He's going to have a splitting headache seven ways. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I'm going to think the best. Everybody say, whatever things are true. See, that's the other thing. Man, we got to get down to truth, and that's why you got to get in the Word. That's why you got to speak the Word and meditate upon the Word. What is true? I got, you know, there's people out there are speaking so much death over America right now. I mean, prophets. You know, it's America's over. I, I sit down with some of these guys. It's all over for America. Do you know what? Here's what's happened. We've had some fairly influential leaders that I've had relationships with now and meetings with, and they have been basically given up on America, and they've given up on the American church. And this is literally what they've spoken. I'm talking in the last few months. And I've sat down, had meals with them. Some of them have come and visited services. They've watched things online. And here's the thing that several of them have said to me now. They said, Pastor Steve, after meeting you, we have hope in the American church. <laughs> they had given up hope. So they have nothing to attach their faith to. I have hope for the church. I ain't giving up on the church. Oh, but Brother Steve, the church is a mess. Hey, it's the best ship afloat. I haven't given up. I haven't given up on the Methodists and the Presbyterians and the Lutherans and the Catholics and the Baptists. Come on. I got hope. I said, I got hope. Shukarama. I haven't given up on Keller, Texas. I haven't given up on, on Fort Worth. I haven't given up on this area. I mean, a lot of people, they'll speak death. Oh, America, it's in its decline. It's judgment. Oh, I'm not giving up hope. My God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I got hope. Come on, amen. Say, I don't, don't sit there and speak, oh, man, nobody's hungry. No, they're hungry. They, huh? They're hungry. They don't even know what they're hungry for, but they're hungry. They're not ha hungry for a whitewashed, mansy-pansy, watered-down gospel, but they are hungry for something real. Amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Someone say, I got hope. So think on the good things. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Why do you want to think on good things? Because that will build up your hope. And as you think in your heart, you're going to become. Shoo. Think on, meditate on the things of God. God, meditate on the Word of God, dream about miracles and signs and wonders and God providing. You know, you get yourself so fired up. Whoo, ha, shoo. Thank you, Lord. She caught it on my Sunday. Romans, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Let me give you a couple more scriptures. And whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's why I like to read testimonies. The Bible says they overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their... I like to read testimonies of God doing really cool stuff. Yeah. Come on, amen. I mean, oh man, I mean, just like God provided this miracle and did that. You know, what, one of the things that happened to me as a young Christian, when I started seeing and hearing about what God did in people's lives around the world, I said, oh, oh God, do that in me. I heard about people seeing angels. Oh, I want to see angels. And I remember, I remember sitting on the edge of my bed, sitting there saying, okay, God, I want to see an angel tonight. I want to see one. 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 I want to. I didn't see one that night, but that's all right. I've, I've seen hundreds now. I've seen hundreds of angels. Hundreds. Because I never lost the hope. I didn't pray one time. I didn't pray one time, say, well, I guess God, I guess it's not for me. I guess God doesn't love me like he loves the others. He doesn't want me to have it. <laughs> you know, God gives some to this and some to that. Okay, well, you can live that way. I choose not to. I say, hey, 
Hey! Oh! Come here. You see this part right here? It says if I ask anything, right. come on. you're going to do it. Yeah. Now, I love you, but I'm holding you to your word. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on amen. Some of you are looking at me strange. He told us to do that. He said, come, let us reason together. In other words, make your case. Hey, if Moses could stand up when God's ready to wipe out all of Israel and say, hey, hey, hang on here a moment. I don't think so. You're going to take them out? You're going to take me out too. God says, whoa, dude. All right, I'll back off. What you all looking at me strange? Woo. I remember one time I was praying for an outbreak of God. We saw a thousand souls saved in a one-year period in our little church in Corona, California, back about 10 years ago. Incredible move of God. But right before then, I had an incredible prayer time, and I was praying for revival in our city. And I was praying and praying and praying, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, make your legal argument. So I started quoting scriptures. I started making my legal case, making pulling word after word after word. And I remember him saying, I'm satisfied. You got it. Woo. Someone say meditate. meditate. Meditate on these things. On. Think on these things. Romans chapter 15. Robert, come. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. Because when you got hope, you'll have joy. Fill you with all joy and peace. When you got hope, you'll have peace. And believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Woo. I got hope that I'm going to have all my needs met and abundance to be a blessing to somebody else. I got a hope. I got a hope, not just a wishing, but a desire with an expectation for fulfillment that I'm going to be debt free. I got a hope that my body's going to be healed. I got a hope my family is going to be whole. I got a hope that God's going to flow through me with signs and wonders and miracles. Woo. I got a hope I'm going to be a radical soul winner. Shoot, on my Sunday. Huh? Come on, someone say hope. Say it again. Say, I got a hope. Shoot. Say it I got a hope. So in the process, I want us to turn a few things. Benjamin, come on. Worship team, if you come on up. I want, I want to change a few things. I want you to turn a few words around. I won't give you the whole list, but I want you to turn I can't to I can. I can't is not in the vocabulary of the born-again radical believer. Can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Huh? I can. I can. I want you to turn I don't know into I know. For I am, what did the Bible say? Paul said, I am fully persuaded that neither death nor life, I'm fully persuaded. It doesn't matter what circumstance, it doesn't matter if it's an angel or a demon, nothing can snatch me out of the love of God. Wait.